Hello everyone and welcome to exam B. This is the second video for the memory based question for SEBI phase 1 year 2020. Earlier to this I have made the videos on 2022 completely and 2020 MCQ part 1 as well as the descriptive question. If you haven't watched those videos till now please go to our YouTube channel and watch those video and then complete this video. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 questions and the answers to all the 10 questions will be shown at the end of the video. There you have to evaluate what answers you have given in this particular uh, all the 10 question set and you have to assign yourself a plus one mark if the answer is correct and minus 0.25 if the answer is incorrect. Grab your pen and paper and let's start attempting these 10 questions for the memory based questions of the year 2022. So the 11th question that we are going to discuss here is related to the transaction. There is a scenario given to you and you have to identify which of these holds true for this particular scenario. If you need to pause the video to read the answer and the question properly, please do that. You can pause the video at any point of time and can mark your answer and then can move forward for the video. The second question for this particular video is related to the layers, OSI layers and which particular layer is responsible for end-to-end -end delivery. That is the question which has been asked. Very easy question, theoretical static. The next question is related to the Thomas Wright route and uh, this particular is applicable with a certain kind of protocol and you are being asked that it relates to which of the kind of protocol. This question is also static but yet conceptual. Question number four for this particular video is related to the phishing attacks in cybersecurity. So what all are the example of the phishing attacks? You have to just identify the correct answer. Question number 15 is related to a code where you have to guess the correct output of the code by making yourself a compiler and compile the code and check if there is any error or not. If there is any error, you have to identify whether it will be a compile time or a runtime thing or if there will be a certain output you have to identify that. So try to run this code and attempt the question properly. This might need at least one minute for the attempt. So do not waste your time. Just pause the video and attempt it for one minute and then answer. Question number 16 is again a code based question where you are only given just a print statement to identify the increment and decrement understanding of the operators. And there again, you can check whether this is going to run compilation uh, properly like compilation will happen properly or there will be any compile time or runtime error according to that you just answer the question question number 17 is related to the python code again the input output question and here there is a very simple python code just understand the code and tell the output what will be the correct output for the code now the last uh, or i can say this particular uh, question is related to data warehousing where you actually have to check the correct data structure for the data warehousing and just a statement answering true or false. The 19th question is related to the commands of the shell scripting and you just have to identify which one is the correct to get executed in the entire uh, process ID command in Unix. The last question in this video is related to the cluster indexing in DBMS. What kind of statement is true for this? You just have to identify and answer that particular question. If you still feel like you need to go back and uh, relook at your answers for these 10 questions, pause the video or go back to that particular video uh, time and read the question properly and then answer the video. After that, when you are done with everything, these are the set of the answers for this particular set of 11 to 20 and just mark your answers, evaluate yourself honestly. And if you are getting anything below five, then you need to back up right now. It is not the level of examination which will going to give you very good results. So you have to start doing very hardcore preparation for phase two at least from now. And if you are getting anything between six to seven, it is like something uh, average. You cannot pass the competition with just having six to seven marks itself because uh, there will be some extra questions as well, which will end up being negative in the overall examination. So you need to brush up a little. You are at the edge. If you are getting anything between eight, nine and ten, then that is a very good score. Just look at the uh, question in which you went wrong and correct your mistake. Learn from this mistake concept wise cover everything wherever you guys went wrong. So this was all from my side and uh, 
i hope this video was uh, helpful for you if you like this video do hit the like button subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon if you haven't done so so far prepare 50 percent faster with i exam b by enrolling to our course that is sebi comprehensive course for it you can check out our course at www.ixambi.com and you can in start with the demo course after that if you still have any problem or any kind of doubt you can mention that in the comment section or you can reach out to us on the number and the email that is flashed on the screen right now. So this was all from my side for this video. Till I bring the next video, keep practicing and stay updated.